So, if you see the effect of this catecholamines on the systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure and as well as the heart rate. Now, let me compare these three drugs, right? We have adrenaline, we have noradrenaline and then we have isoprenaline. Let me compare the effect of these three drugs on systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure and as well as the heart rate of the individual. You take on the systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Remember on the systolic blood pressure the action is via beta 1 receptors. You take on diastolic blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure is via beta 2 receptors and as well as the alpha 1 receptors. You take the action of the adrenaline. Adrenaline will increase the systolic blood pressure whereas it has nil action on the diastolic blood pressure. Alright, next. You take noradrenaline. Noradrenaline, it will increase both. It will increase the systolic blood pressure. It will also increase the diastolic blood pressure. Now, why do you think the action of the adrenaline on the diastolic blood pressure is nil? Because adrenaline can stimulate the alpha 1 receptors which will cause vasoconstriction. Adrenaline can also stimulate the beta 2 receptors which will cause vasodilatation and thereby the effect will be neutralized. Whereas you take noradrenaline, noradrenaline it, has, it is having the predominant action on the alpha 1 receptors. That is the reason why the diastolic blood pressure of the individual increases. Alright, next you take isoprenaline. Isoprenaline it predominantly stimulates the beta 1 receptors thereby the systolic blood pressure increases whereas if you take the diastolic blood pressure the diastolic blood pressure is decreased by your isoprenaline. Alright, next. Next you see the effect on the heart rate of the individual. Right, next you see the effect of these drugs on the heart rate of the individual. Now, now these drugs they are having direct actions, indirect actions in the sense the reflex actions. Okay, now you take the direct actions. Right, direct actions. So, if you take the direct actions of these drugs, the direct actions of these drugs is via the beta 1 receptors. Whereas, you take the reflex actions. Right, reflex actions. So, reflex actions is via M2 receptors. Right. And finally, let me tell you what will be the net effect. Right? What will be the net effect? Now, first, let me tell you about the action of the adrenaline. If you take the action of the adrenaline, remember, it stimulates the beta 1 receptors, thereby there will be increase in the heart rate of the individual and this adrenaline it has no effect on the M2 receptors the reflex action is not there with the adrenaline. So if you take the net effect net effect is increase in the heart rate of the individual. Next you take noradrenaline. Noradrenaline yes it will stimulate the beta 1 receptors thereby the heart rate of the individual increases. Noradrenaline it also acts on M2 receptors right and the reflex action is decrease in the heart rate of the individual. So what will be the net effect of this noradrenaline? The net effect is decrease in the heart rate of the individual. Next you take this isoprenaline. Isoprenaline it acts on beta 1 receptors it will increase the heart rate of the individual. And if you take the reflex action by acting on M2 receptors also it will increase the heart rate of the individual and the net effect is it will increase the heart rate of the individual. 
that is the net effect all right so this is the actions of this adrenaline noradrenaline and isoprenaline on the various components of the blood pressure and as well as the heart rate all right now after having discussed about the catecholamines now let me discuss about the non catecholamines now let me discuss the non catecholamines so until now like what we have discussed was the catecholamines so if you take the non catecholamines you see here they act on the alpha 1 receptors and we have the alpha 1 agonists and if you take the examples of this particular alpha 1 agonist this alpha 1 agonist where are they used is they are used as the nasal decongestants by acting on alpha 1 receptors they are used as nasal decongestants all right now let me tell you what are those nasal decongestants the nasal decongestants they include the drugs like nafazoline right the drugs like nafazoline and then you have the oxymetazoline and as well as xylometazoline right we have oxymetazoline and then we have xylo metazoline okay so these are the alpha 1 agonists which are the nasal decongestants now a point what you should remember here is when effect of these drugs is over right when the effect of these drugs they subside right when the effect of these drugs it subside what will happen is there will be after congestion which is seen right there will be after congestion which is seen okay so once the effect is reduced immediately they will have congestion again okay now when you use these drugs for prolongedly so remember prolonged use of these drugs right prolonged use of these drugs will result in what is called as atrophic rhinitis right will result in atrophic rhinitis and this particular atrophic rhinitis it is called as rhinitis medicamentosa right it is called as rhinitis medicamentosa okay so that is what is called as atrophic rhinitis which is caused by the prolonged use of this nasal decongestants next now we have another very important drug which is a non catecholamine which is a phenylephrine if you take this phenylephrine where do we use this phenylephrine remember phenylephrine it can be used as midriatic right for the dilatation of the pupil we use this phenylephrine and the point what you should remember is phenylephrine can be used as midriatic but it will not cause cycloplegia right in the sense it will not cause the loss of accommodation okay so it is used as midriatic right and a point you should remember is it does not cause cycloplegia that is in the sense with phenylephrine there is no loss of accommodation okay next next let me tell you some of the other non catecholamines we have some other non catecholamines like methoxamine and as well as mifentermine right so we have methoxamine is one particular drug and we have mifentermine 
So if you take this methoxamine and as well as mifentermine, both of these drugs, they are used to increase the blood pressure of the individual. Right, they are used to increase the blood pressure of the individual in hypotensive states. Right, in hypotensive states, methoxamine and as well as mifentermine will increase the blood pressure of the individual. Next, we have a drug called midodrin. Right, we have a drug which is called as midodrin. Midodrin, as such, it is a prodrug. Right, as such, this is a prodrug. And what is the active metabolite? The active metabolite of midodrin is desglimodrin. Right, so remember the active metabolite is. Desglimidodrin. Okay, so the active metabolite is desglimidodrin. That is the active metabolite. Now, where is this used? Remember, midodrin is the drug which is used in the treatment of orthostatic hypotension. So, this desglimidodrin. This is the active metabolite. And where is this used? This is used in the treatment of orthostatic hypotension. Now, what do you mean by this orthostatic hypotension is? Orthostatic hypotension is that particular clinical condition which is characterized by when the individual from the supine position once he moves to a standing position right the individual from supine position once he moves to the standing posture the blood pressure of the individual reduces how much it reduces is the systolic blood pressure reduces by 20 millimeters of mercury diastolic blood pressure reduces by 10 millimeters of mercury all right, systolic blood pressure reduces by 20 and diastolic blood pressure reduces by 10 millimeters of mercury. That is what is called as the orthostatic hypotension, right? So in case of orthostatic hypotension, this particular midodrin is being used. Next, we have a drug called phenylpropanolamine, right? Phenylpropanolamine. There is one important multiple choice question regarding this phenylpropanolamine. So phenylpropanolamine, the point what you should remember is this was banned. Why it is banned is a multiple choice question. So phenylpropanolamine was banned due to the risk of the hemorrhagic stroke. So due to the risk of hemorrhagic stroke this phenylpropanolamine is banned okay so that is the point what you should remember about the phenylpropanolamine right let me shortly revise about the non-catecholamines non-catecholamines we have a group of alpha 1 agonists they are used as nasal decongestants the examples what we have is nafazoline oxymetazoline and as well as xylometazoline the these are used as nasal decongestants once the effect of these drugs is reduced there will be after congestion again. Next, prolonged use of this alpha-1 agonist, the individual will have atrophic rhinitis, which is called as rhinitis medicamentosa, right? Which is called as rhinitis medicamentosa. Next, you take this another important drug that is phenylephrine. Phenylephrine, it is used as midriatic and it does not cause cycloplegia. You take, we have two other important drugs that is methoxamine and as well as mefentermine. Methoxamine and mefentermine will increase the blood pressure of the individual in hypotensive states. Next, we have a drug called midodrin which is a prodrug, right? And what is the active metabolite of this midodrin? That is desglimidodrin. Where is this used? This is used in case of 
orthostatic hypotension. Next, we have a drug called phenylpropanolamine that is banned from the market. Why? Because of the risk of hemorrhagic stroke, it is banned.